Now, one of the best things about golf is there is a variety of ways to swing the club and still get the job done. However, what we do see with the best players in the world is some commonalities between where they position their arms, the club and the body in the downswing. If you're struggling with your ball striking, it could very well be one of these. So stay tuned, this video could really help. Let's get stuck in. Welcome back to the channel guys, Kerry Gray here in the studio at Joondala Resort. Before we get stuck in, please go down below, click subscribe, click that little bell if you haven't already. I've got heaps of great content coming your way to really help you improve in the year ahead. Also, just a little friendly reminder that I am available for online coaching, access to my services in a remote fashion. You send me your swings and I give you personalized drills and exercises to really upgrade the quality of your ball striking and help you lower that handicap. Alrighty, in today's lesson, we're gonna be talking all about the three commonalities that we see with the best ball strikers in the world relative to what we see the recreational golfers do. And you yourself might be just doing one of these three, which is affecting your ball striking. So let's run through these three. The first, from the address position, the professional would swing to the top of the swing and the very first move that would start this club making its journey back down towards the target is a movement and a pressure shift of the lower body towards the target. So we can see from the down the line view, we can see that my hips almost look like they're stalling out. They're not rotating immediately back towards the target. They're actually pushing a little bit in the direction I wanna send the golf ball. From the face on view, it very much so looks like this. We're gonna to swing to the top and what we see with the professional golfer is that they will have about a couple of inches of movement of the lower body towards the target really before they start unwinding everything into the moment of impact. What we do see with the recreational golfer is generally not enough forward movement. Not only do we see a lot of players sway off the golf ball in the backswing, but they also generally tend to stay too far back and behind. And one of the big things that we see as a result of doing so is this club move across, start cutting across the golf ball, and therefore you can get some of those dreaded slices as well. So the first thing that we see the professional do that you might not be doing is a movement of the lower body towards the target. I like to call it a little bump of the hips. So if you can film yourself or even just get your buddy to watch or just look in the mirror and you see that you start your downswing, just laying this club across my shoulders here, you see that you start your downswing just by this big twisting motion and there's not enough movement of that lower body pushing towards the target. Well, this is something that you need to employ in your golf swing. It's how we generate a lot of power and speed throughout the motion. I feel like I'm putting a lot of pressure down onto this lead leg and that really helps me explode and extend up through the ball which is gonna give me the greatest amount of distance as a result. So a great way to actually just improve this is to simply just go through this drill of swinging to the top and just feel like you're getting this bump of the hips towards the target. We should feel a shifting of a pressure from the right foot to the left foot, and that puts me in a great position to then let everything happen from there. So that's number one. Number two, closely related to that, is the rotation of that lower body. So if I set up to this golf ball here, what we would see with the professional from the top of the swing is not only a shift of the hips, but also a rotation of the hips. And by the time that this lead arm gets about halfway down or when it's level with the ground, what we would tend to see is that their knees would almost be back into alignment to the point that they started from. So if my knees were level here, I swing to the top as I start this first initial movement down, we would tend to see them get back into that same orientation. Very often what we see players do by this stage is not have enough rotation. They might just be pulling the golf club down into their body, they get stuck, they get bunched up. Or from the other side, we tend to see that as players get to the top, they might actually have too much. And therefore by the time they get to that stage where the hands are about level, we find that their legs are too open. This just encourages them to stay too far back through the ball for too long. So that's number two, too much rotation or not enough. The way you simply work on this is just by making some rehearsal swings. I like to make sure we see a big turn to the top of the swing, but then as we start down, let's try and get at the same time as we're getting a shift, let's also get a rotation of those hips. And the last and final one is what we tend to see with the majority of the golfers from the top of the swing is they don't have enough control over what their right arm for the right hand or their trail arm is doing in the downswing we tend to see very common with players who slice the ball. They would swing to the top and they would leave their arms up in such a position 
rotate violently, and the club would get way out of sequence. And then by the time they get down to this halfway down position, instead of the hands being down in front of them like we see the professional, they would be back and behind in this orientation here. And it makes it very challenging to get any compression on the golf ball as a result. We tend to see that the arms will bunch up or add loft and a lot of ball striking issues in shoes. So from the down the line, once again, we would see the recreational golfer tend to keep their hands up for too long as they start down and they don't let their arms come underneath enough, especially if you are someone who slices the ball. We need to get the feeling that the arms are unloading underneath our chest a little bit quicker. There's a very famous drill out there used by Tiger Woods and Justin Rose, a lot of best players of trying to get their arms unloading back underneath without their shoulders violently rotating. Now a great checkpoint for this is by the time that the lead arm is level with the ground, we like to see this elbow back in front of the seam line of the shirt. Far too often, we'll see players get this right arm kicking out for the right hander, and we can see it's certainly not in front. The body and the right leg then starts to move towards the ball too much, and it really starts to affect our ability to control the bottom of the swing. So one of my favorite exercises to work on this is to get your left hand, place it behind your right tricep. What you're gonna do is you're gonna set up to the golf ball. If you're a left-hander, just flip this around. And as we make a backswing, what I want you to feel is that you're always pushing that arm back in front of your body. And as you can see, as I move through this sequence, the arm is staying a lot more in front of me throughout the entirety. One view of that from the down the line, I'm gonna to swing to the top. I'm always feeling like it's staying in front. And you can see how this would look very different from that position that I showed you before with the average recreational golfer who struggles with their ball striking. So there you have it, the three commonalities that we see with the professional, the best ball strikers in the world. By the time that they get to this lead arm parallel position, they would tend to have a shifting of their lower body towards the target. They would have a rotation where their legs would get back to level where they started. And they would also have great control of this trail arm, putting it into a position where the shaft can shallow and it will help us get a more of a compressed strike on the golf ball. So let's put all those three together. I'm very mindful for me. I'm okay with shifting my hips towards the target. Sometimes I don't rotate enough and I definitely sometimes struggle to get my trail arm in front. So for me on this one, I'm just gonna make a couple of rehearsals trying to feel that right arm get into position, put two hands on, a little bit of a practice swing through. Let's see how I go when I strike this. That one felt really good off the club face, went directly at my target. So if you are struggling with your ball striking, what I want you to do is go and get a lesson from your PGA professional, get a lesson from me online through Skillist, or simply just film yourself. Use the references that I've given you here today in this lesson to see and compare what you're doing with where I was, and this might be just something that could really help you improve that ball striking. So I hope you've enjoyed today's video. If you got any questions at all, as always, please ask me below. But until next time, I'm Kerry Gray, thanks for watching.